Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I'm getting ready to make a couple of videos today, but before I do that, I wanted to clean up a live stream that I did the other day. We had quite a few guests and we all reviewed scientists versus flat earthers. Now, it was a rather long stream, had some technical difficulties at the start, so I thought I'd clean it up and re-release it at, at the request of a lot of the viewers. So, I hope you enjoy it. Well guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Bob the Science Guy and greetings from Northern Michigan. You know, I've been taking off for the last two weeks. I had a conference out in Phoenix and I met one of my subscribers out there, a fan of the channel. Had dinner with him and he gave me this beautiful gift. Let's see if we can see it here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Now the cool thing about this is you can, uh, you can change the colors on it. So I can make it red or I can make it green or white or yellow or any color I want. So that was a really nice gift and I want to thank Randy in Phoenix, Arizona for making this for me. We'll stick it down here and we'll get back to it a little bit later. But tonight what I wanted to do was I wanted to go ahead and put up this video from Jubilee. This is called Science versus Flat Earth. Can we trust science? And I thought maybe we'd watch it a little bit, and I have permission from these folks to go ahead and stream it, and um, maybe discuss it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get it started, and while we do that, I'm going to get a meet set up so you guys can call in. We have the advantage of information today that's outside of uh, channels two, four, and seven, and the, the few networks that are corporately owned. It's pretty easy to say YouTube isn't research, but when you spend enough time, you're picking up quite a bit, and with the discussion groups, panels, we've uh, gone against opposition, we've opposed ourselves. Uh, surprisingly enough, Flat Earth is its own worst enemy. So it's not that easy for us to come to consensus and we find the consensus is orchestrated and not actually scientific in any way. You know, my grandfather used to tell me growing up, never believe anything you read in the newspaper, right? He told that to me. Now, with the age of the internet, it's like, you know, how much of this misinformation are you getting there? And when you have like eyewitnesses taking video of something, you do have to uh, take everything with a grain of salt. That's why, because of my, um, my multimedia background, I knew that all that stuff could be faked. You know, take it into Photoshop, take it into After Effects. Okay, this is at the core of the issue of why there are so many flat earth believers out there right now. The problem is the information from someone who decides to start a website or produce a YouTube video is not reliable. When I have a toothache, I go to a dentist. When my car breaks down, I go to a mechanic. When you have questions about cosmology, you should go to an astrophysicist, you should go to a physicist, you should go to people who have spent years and years studying these ideas. Not some six minute YouTube video. There is a percentage of people that if they saw a YouTube video that was not within their scientific chops to refute on the face of it, would believe anything out there. Now, actually, this is a common problem in the Flat Earth. Most of the information in the Flat Earth comes from other Flat Earthers via YouTube videos. Now, the people that are producing these YouTube videos run fish and chip shops in Thailand. They're yoga instructors. They're not experts in this field. People that have devoted their lives to understanding physics and astronomy and the sciences. Now, the point that he raises is very salient. If you have a toothache, you go to a dentist. You don't go to an auto mechanic. You don't go to a hairdresser. And I think that this is something that we're going to see an example of right here. And that, that is that when he talks about people who don't know any better trying to review documents on these subjects without any assistance or without any instruction, can come to some very erroneous conclusions. Let's see what he's talking about. One of the things I will say is NASA.gov has their own documents out there that we get to vet. 
which is through the Freedom of Information Act. And would you agree that NASA documents, if they're on display, that we should be able to go and research inside there? NASA is not proving that the Earth is flat. Well, they say well, it in 14 you should, of the documents. you should read what NASA says, so, and you should listen to what I NASA says. I would love to see your NASA all, evidence all, that the Earth is it's flat. It's only their contradictory issues okay, that bring see. us here. We're all familiar with the Earth rise <laughs> photo, right? The Earth is rising over the moon. We're all familiar with it. That's a NASA. You can go out to NASA's site. You can download the original, right? I I already know what you're going to ask. So you bring up the luminance on it, and you can see where it's cut out and pasted there. They're showing us doctored images that are clearly doctored. The blue marble is a very famous image from 1972. When you talk to the artist from NASA, his name is Robert Simmons, he talks about exactly how it was created from data, and it's not a photograph whatsoever. You know, this is a classic flat earth misrepresentation. Robert Simmons, who is an employee of NASA apparently, talked about stitching together composite photographs. And photographs of the earth from low earth orbit are composites because they have to be. All right. In 1972, how old was Robert Simmons? And did he use Photoshop, which didn't exist? The blue marble photograph is not a composite image. It is a single film image from Apollo 17. Uh, there's nothing added to it. Now, what he's talking about with these artifacts that you can pull up sometimes on some of these photos, those are artifacts of the compression of the photo. If you look at the original high resolution photo, that, those artifacts simply aren't there. But when you drop that photo down to something that is uploaded uh, as, a, as a press release to the internet, you may take something that you know is 10,000 by 10,000 pixels and drop it down to 100 by 100 pixels. That JPG compression causes those artifacts around bright objects. This has been clearly demonstrated in an excellent video by Greater Sapien. Thank you. Right. So when I was 12 years old, I went to space camp and I met Alan B. Shepard. Oh, nice. Yep, yep. And I wanted to be an astronaut and I wanted to be the first woman to walk the moon. Oh. So um, for me, I'm a glober. I went into this completely wanting it to be true. And my husband told me, you know, he saw this thing about the fake moon landing. And I was like, you're absolutely crazy. There's no way that the moon landings are fake. And then in 2010, my husband was killed. And so I never really developed that until around um, 2014 when Flat Earth kind of came back up. And that, sorry, and that little voice inside my head said, remember the fake moon landings? Remember when that was brought to my attention? And then I started really critically analyzing that. And I would say, you know, just looking at that evidence, if they can lie about the moon landings, they can certainly lie about pictures and satellites and other things. And so, you know, here's something that absolutely amazes me about Shelley. Now, Shelley, as you know, is one of the JM Truth people that's trying to put out this documentary uh, that we all seem uh -huh. to be having a great deal of fun with. This is a woman who is a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, which is an engineering school. Do you have any doubt in your mind that she does not understand that the Earth is a sphere? Now, I've, the I've sad thing, about, these... yeah, Go the ahead. sad thing about it is that, you know, her husband talked to her about you know fake moon landings, which is another absurdity, and then unfortunately, apparently, he was killed, and. I think she's kind of still trying to hold on to something from him by holding on to his little fake moon landing thing. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I'm an internist. But this kind of strikes me as a little fishy and a little secondary gain type stuff. Because you know darn well, if she was an officer in the Army, she damn well knows the Earth is round. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? I 100% think that as well. I actually saw this episode a couple of weeks back or a week back or something like that. And I'm like, she's an engineer, but she, oh my, I mean, I, I can't really explain how I'm thinking because she has enough 
education, even if you don't have an education, you can go out and do field research yourself. And she has not even tried that. She, like what they were saying earlier, a couple of questions back, got all of their information off of YouTube videos, which is ridiculous. Anyone can put up a YouTube video. Well, and apparently anybody does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is why we have flat earth and young creationism and fake moon landings. But let's, uh, Blue, did you have anything to add or do you want to go back to the, uh, you want to go back to the I'll, video here? I like, uh, we, we can go back to the video. I'll just say that I don't, uh, I don't think it's quite possible that, that anyone could make it through the U.S. Military Academy and believe, <laughs> now hold the belief that the earth is flat. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, it yes. is. Yes. All right. I started going down that rabbit hole of, of studying, so... That was my influence from How my husband. How many lies does it take to make a liar, right? And being ridiculed for being inquisitive um, is, is pretty tough on us. I wouldn't say that I've changed my mind because my mind isn't set. NASA is, is solely designed to change my mind. It is from its inception, from its discovery, has that been a me. television program, it's been a space program to sell us on something that they've yet to actually show us. Show me a globe spinning with clouds and a moon show me home and i think i could shut up quite i mean easily i think i could shut up the timing of your conversions is interesting to me 20 years ago the flat earth world was tiny and insignificant uh enter the advent of the internet youtube online discussion groups all these new available places where you could find information about everything. This is true that the evidence as you well, used, a were not uh, robust. Yes, evidence. hello. And the sources hey, you used, you they were not yeah, reliable fine. sources again. But my problem is that, and I, I, I well, like Gabriel. you guys that you are very well, skeptical. Gabriel. But at the same time, Gabriel. you are not a skeptical about the <laughs> no system. You that should have come back, first. You, you, you think that that's my foundation for why I believe the Earth is flat. And I'm telling you, you're wrong. Okay. I have evidence that proves it's flat. What type of evidence? It's not yeah. a ball. What type of evidence? We're being misled. We're being deliberately misled by mainstream now, media. What's your evidence? You're we thinking. see too far. We see too far. We should not be able to see. I live in Dana Point. Okay. I can see San Clemente Island, which is 60 miles away. So what? What do you mean, so what? Oh, I'm it's on the beach. It's 100 feet I'm tall. on the beach. It is what tall. do you mean by so what? I'm on but, the beach. Yeah, but yeah. Can you see a ship which is going? We're not oh, yeah, let's talk about, about the ship that goes yes. over the curvature okay. of the Earth. I love so, it. So. Okay. Now, this is a, an example of classic flat Earth misdirection. Shelley's been cornered by the scientists. Yes, you can see the island from the shore because it's got some elevation on the island, but you can't see a boat going from your location to the island at sea level because it'll be blocked by the curvature of the earth. Watch how Shelley tries to extricate herself from this and change the subject to the P900 and how it can zoom back in boats. Science has said that when I see a ship go out of my field of view, it's going over the curvature of the Earth, correct? Yes. But then I bring my P900 up, and guess what? I can zoom it back in. Not so is it going time. over the curvature of the no, Earth or not? You Absolutely. Oh, not all the time? You not all the time? No, no, you don't see all the ship. The bottom part of the ship. Yeah. If the Earth were truly flat, there would be really hardly any limit. You would be able flat to stand Earth at the top of the camera. Empire State Building and look towards Chicago, a mere thousand miles away, and see the lights of Chicago at I'm night. I'm blaming Nike oh, for all this bullshit. Very it, thick. I, I've been Water into alone. astronomy since I was 10. It's faulty logic. It's completely faulty logic. Okay. One of the big things I do is investigate extraordinary claims like flat eartherism or ESP or all sorts of different things. The Earth is undoubtedly a globe and not flat. This is well supported by gobs of science. Scientific consensus is possible. Consensus is what is the question? I don't understand the question. Scientific consensus is possible. Possible? Anything is possible. I mean, anything is possible. I, I've got to...
you know, scientific consensus means that the preponderance of evidence in the scientific community leads to an agreement that this is what's going on. There's always going to be a few dissenters. But when you get a consensus in the scientific community, that consensus probably is very much more closer to the truth than the one guy that think it's, thinks it's the reptilian overlords coming from the planet Nabaru. So they don't even understand what the term scientific consensus means. That's why two of them are still standing over there and only one is, o is over with the scientists because he says, well, shoot, anything's possible. Well, no, anything really isn't possible. Uh, there's some things that are really not possible and there are some things that are extraordinarily unlikely. We'll head on back got a tremendous issue with consensus and peer review. I've been spending a lot of time arguing the other, with people that argue the other side. And I found that surprisingly, consensus always wins. It, it was shocking to me that the group with the majority has an incredible advantage. As scientists, flat earthers, truthers, punks, we're at an incredible disadvantage. Let's talk about scientific consensus for a second. You're never going to get 100% of anyone. There is scientific consensus on a global Earth. There's scientific consensus on evolution. A lot of big they issues. They use the word theory. No, Do you know what a, a theory in science is an extremely... And a, fa and a fact is me, a fact. Don't mistake this word theory. You are. In not science, me. it's not conjecture. It's, not it's an explanation. Is, is it by definition, well, it's an well explanation. Supported. It's a well deep... Well, let's talk so about this a something fact. Show me a fact. Then. Made a mistake. Why aren't all facts theories. theories? In science, the word theory is the highest level that you can give something because it's so well supported. What about a fact? That is a fact. It's it's, it's but, not well, but, a fact. You would call it. You a know fact. why? Do you know why? Because in science, there's always room for improvement. There's always room to find to better tweak. to tweak and find better information. So that is how science works. It gets better refined over time, as opposed to flat earth theory, which never gets refined. It simply is what it, it is. New ideas trains. have limited access to media and limited exposure. Yep. Until we're in the a we're university curriculum, we will continue to appear uneducated. Well, that's not true. In the history of science, we had many occasions that it, the idea it was not welcomed by the society. Einstein was one of them. Galileo. Galileo was one of them. But if your theory is an authentic one, and it can be go through this hardship of scientific method, eventually will win. I used to believe that science was after the truth, right? They just, we all just want to know what the truth is. Science has been trying so hard to divorce itself from the idea of a creator when God's intent was to create science to lead you to him. You know, sometimes things seem supernatural uh, that we are able to explain later through, you know, science. Okay, I understand. But there are other things as well that are supernatural, that go beyond the natural, that we can only explain uh, through believing in a creator, right? This is my... You know, right here, I think that we see the problem with Flat Earth. The basic premise of Flat Earth is that there is a God who magically created everything. And we're special because we're God's creatures made in his own image. Not her image, his own image. Now, when I was a child, my mom used to make cookies. I had no idea how she made cookies when I was five years old. All I know is that she took this gunk put it in the oven, and cookies came out, all right? As I grew up and became an adult, I began to understand that there's a certain process that you use to make cookies. You mix the dough, you add the chocolate chips, you bake it at a certain temperature for a certain period of time. Processes occur in the oven due to the heat, and the end result is you have cookies. Did it make my mom any less special? No, it didn't. Uh, did it make the cookies any less delicious? No, it didn't. But I grew to understand how it happened. Now, they seem to believe that if we try and explain natural phenomenon, we're somehow denying the existence of God. Nothing further from the truth. If God created heavens and earth, as the Bible says, he used a process to do it. 
Science tries to understand what that process was. That doesn't mean that you don't believe in God. Issue with science, uh, scientific approach and non-scientific approach. You are absolutely right. In science, we are after the truth. And we are hoping by each day we're getting closer and closer to the truth. We never get there. Never. Well, I, that's, I know that's true for you. And I, no, no, I, that's I, a science. That's, that's you guys. You think you do have the truth. Now let's look at the evidences. As you were mentioning, you do have the conclusion, let's find the evidences. Science doesn't work that that's way. Not well, that's not true. That is not well, true. you are it's saying you, no. you are you referring could. to Jesus, whom many billions of people do not believe, including myself. And many more billions do. So what? So, so who's right? Of course right. I can. Going, so the, when you say that we start with a conclusion and then try to match everything to make it work, like that to me is complete dishonesty. That is not true at all. That is what you are doing no, right now. No, you're not. You're making that assumption. No. Which I think science assumption. does a lot of. So do you I, make I, assumptions I, I, or I, not? Does I, science I make assumptions? Know. Does science no, make well, assumptions? Well, yeah, we, of sure. Okay. Of we do but, make assumptions but, based on things that are well supported and bias. proven and reproven. Bias. We don't Show have to. Show me how you isolate gravity. If gravity we is don't an have assumption, to. show me in the scientific method how you isolate gravity. We've done the actual place is that. The private does not know what the general is doing. There's compartmentalization happening all the time. Of course. So it wouldn't be that far-fetched. Has the government ever lied to us is really the question at stake. We all agree on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but now we, now, ground. Now, now, we, now we have uh, <laughs> NASA.gov, right? And we, oh, absolutely, they're not lying about anything. They're completely transparent. Everything is true. You know, this, of course, is a straw man argument. Uh, simply because the government in general is not always 100% forthcoming with us doesn't infer or require by necessity that everything that they say is incorrect. Simply because NASA is a governmental agency, a .gov, that does science doesn't mean that simply by being a governmental agency they are by definition lying to us. You know, this argument is absurd, and as a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy, she was a .gov at one time as well, and by her own logic, we should therefore disbelieve everything that comes out of her mouth. It's just not true. It's a fallacious argument, an absurd and childish argument. You were talking about a government. Now yeah. you're talking about an agency NASA. of the government. Gov. But this agency is scrutinized by thousands and thousands of scientists around the globe. You are dealing with smart people, believe me. You are dealing with deny, smart people. I don't deny that. So it is very hard to do that. Once or twice, maybe. Not for the whole time. Well, guys, this was a very long live chat over two and a half hours. We'll probably go over it for the next couple of days because there are so many subjects on this that I really want to touch upon. Tomorrow, we're going to the moon landings, in fact. So if you have a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. Make sure you check out my website and Patreon if you're so inclined. And I'll see you again tomorrow. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Maine.